Okay, great tens. Welcome to this next lesson in statistics and probability. In this lesson, we're going to carry on working on the statistics um, that we were doing in the last lesson. As you can see, I've left the scribbles that I made from the last lesson. We were working out, working with this example, and we had the set of numbers, which are two, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine. And the reason I included it was because we worked out what Q2 was, which was the median, which was over here, the middle number of your 11 numbers. We then worked out Q1, which was the middle of these numbers here, which is three. We worked out Q3, which is seven, because it's the middle of those five numbers. And the interquartile range is obviously seven minus three, Q3 minus Q1, which is four. Now, the reason that I left this example in was because we were still busy with this where we had a minimum value from the previous example, we had a minimum value of two, a lower quartile of three, a median of five, an upper quartile of seven, and a maximum number, maximum value of nine. And this is called the five number summary. So if they ever ask you to write out your five number summary, of your data. It is the minimum value, the maximum value, the lower quartile, median, and upper quartile, okay? And then what you do is you use a box and whisker diagram to draw this, the, these, to represent, okay, these five numbers. Okay, so the way we're gonna do that is first of all, when you do it, you're going to have a ruler and you're going to use your ruler and your pencil, please not I said pencil, and you're going to mark off numbers, okay? Since we're only going to 10, I'm going to make my back gaps a little bit bigger than that. So I'm going to write that this is one, two, and you obviously will make it look beautiful and make sure that these gaps are perfect because you will be writing them from the measurements on the ruler. Okay, unfortunately my software doesn't allow me to use a ruler on this. Okay, so that approximately is how you would write it. So you always draw a number line, okay? And obviously these gaps can be bigger or smaller depending on what your range of your values is. Okay, your minimum value is two. So we're going to draw a line next opposite the two. The lower quartile is three, so we're going to draw a line there. The median is five. The upper quartile is seven. And the maximum value is nine. So what happens is you join these quartiles. So you end up with a box. And that is considered to be your box. And then these two values are your whiskers. Okay, these two values are your whiskers. So obviously you'd be using a ruler to draw this in when you were doing your homework, okay, or doing your actual questions. Okay, but unfortunately, like I said, I don't have the facility for that. So now if we had to look at this data, do you see the data is fairly evenly spread? I mean, the median, which is Q2, is exactly halfway between Q1 and Q3. So they'd like to ask you about your data and ask you about whether what you think the data is, if it's evenly distributed or not evenly distributed, if it's skewed to the left or skewed to the right. And what I find is a lot of my students get a bit confused with it when it comes to these whiskers. They think that the whiskers affect the way we say the data is skewed, but it's not. The data that we are really analyzing is everything within the box, okay? And you can see that at the moment that, like I said, the median is exactly in half between, the halfway between the Q1 and Q3. So we can say that this is perfectly evenly distributed. If it looked like this, say your block still went to seven, but let's say Q2 happened to be, yeah, so this was Q1, this was Q2 and this was Q7. It just depends on how the data was arranged. We would say that this was skewed to the right. Okay, what is it saying? It's saying that more of the data points are found above the median. Okay, more of the data points are found above the median. 
And if we had one that looks like this, where this is Q1 and this is Q7, I mean 7, and then not Q7, sorry, Q3 at 7, and it was like this, then we would say it was skewed to the left. Okay, so you need to understand, grade 10s, that when we talk about which way this data has been distributed, has been distributed more this side or more that side of the median, okay, it's got nothing to do with the whiskers, okay, that is just showing us about our outliers. Right, so the best thing to do in order to make sure you understand how to do this is to actually do examples. So I've copied a couple of examples out of old exam papers. Most of these come from the government and are exemplars. So it says a baker keeps a record of the number of scones that he sells each day. The data for 19 days is shown below. So we should expect 19 numbers. It says determine the mean of the given data. Then it says rearrange the data in ascending order and then determine the median. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm first going to rearrange this data, then I'll worry about finding the mean. Okay. So our smallest number looks like it is 31. So I'm going to write 31 and I'll cross that out and then 31 and cross that one out. Let's see what else we got. We got a 36, there's a 34 and that's it. So we got a 34, cross that out. We got a 36. Okay, then let's see what else we got. Any other 30s? We got 39 and a 37. So we've got 37 and we've got 39. Right, so let's check 62, 74, 60, 60, 60, 60 40, 50, 60, 40, 40, 40. Okay, so no more 30s. Now we're going to go for 40. Okay, how many 40s? That's only 40. Then we're going to find 43. Okay, two 46s, 46 and 46 and 48. And then it's a 56, no, there's a 52 first, 52. Then it's 56. And then it's 60, 62. 63, 65, 66, and 74. Okay, and now we check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Excellent, so we do have 19 numbers. Now the next thing we have to do is work out the mean. And what is the mean? The mean is when we add all the numbers and divide by the number of numbers. So we're going to find the sum of this. So let's get out our calculator. Okay, and we're just going to add up all the numbers. So let's press it on first. So we've got 31 plus 31 plus 34 plus 36 plus 37 plus 39 plus 40 plus 43 plus 46 plus 46 plus 48 plus 52 plus 56 plus 60 plus 62 plus 63 plus 65, plus 66, whoopsie, careful. Oh, I made a mistake, 62, then a 63, got too excited, plus 65, plus 66, plus 74, equals divided by 19, because there are 19 numbers, and the mean is 48.89. 
So we're going to round that off to one decimal, so it becomes 48.9. So the mean of the data is 48,9. Now it says rearrange the data in ascending order, which we've done, and then determine the median. Okay, so halfway of 19, do you agree that 19, oopsie, 19 divided by 2 is what? It is 9, 0, 9, 5. Okay, so do you agree that we should have nine numbers and then the median? And then the next num nine numbers, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's perfectly correct. So therefore the median is 46. Now it says determine the lower and upper quartiles of the data. Okay, so now we're looking at this data here. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we want the number in the middle, which is going to be the fifth number. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 37. So do you agree that Q1 is equal to 37, the lower quartile? Okay. And then Q3 is going to be the upper quartile. And it is also going to be equidistant from the median. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 62. So therefore Q3 is 62. Four. Okay, wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, just checking. Okay, right, now it says draw a whisker diagram to represent the data. Okay, so we're going from 31 to 74. So it's a little bit of a binker gap between all the numbers, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to start at 30 and go through to 75. Okay, we're going to start at 30 and go through to 80, for example. But what we're going to do is we're going to go 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So I strongly recommend that you guys use a ruler and measure this out properly. So do you agree that the minimum value, if we need to do a box and whisker diagram, we need a five-point summary. So we need minimum, maximum, Q1, Q2, Q3. That's what we need, okay? So the minimum, do you agree, is 31. And the maximum is 74. Q1 is 37, Q2 is a median, which we worked out to be 46, and Q3 is equal to 62. So very easy to be able to do. Oh, and we've done the maximum, okay. So the minimum is 31, so it's just above here. The Q1 is 37, so that's about five, that's about the 37. Okay, then what do we have? We've got Q2 is 46 and Q3 is 62. So then we're going to join these lines over here. And then we've got 74, 74. Okay, so what I really want to suggest to you guys is you write down the numbers. So this is 31, which is going to be the minimum. Okay, this is going to be Q1, which is 37. This is Q2, which is 46. This is Q3, which is 62. And this is the maximum of 74. Okay, the reason I say you should write down the values is because you guys should be using a ruler and you should be measuring out exactly where these points are, but I know that some of you aren't that accurate, but you always, always, always try and do this. Well, you have to use a ruler to do this, but then try and write the number. Remember to write the numbers up over here so you can see the difference. Okay, so we've drawn a box and whisker diagram to represent the data. So now I want to push it just a little bit further. What can we say about this data? Let's see. The gap from here to here is six. Okay, then the gap from there to there is 9, but the gap from there to there is bigger than 9, and the gap from there to there is also 
bigger than, what is this, 12. Okay, so do you agree we can say that this data is definitely skewed to the right? Because from year to year is only nine, but from year to year is almost 20. So definitely we can say the data is skewed to the right. There's more data on the right-hand side of the median than there is on the left-hand side. Right, let's do another example of one of the questions that was in the old exam papers. Okay, let's just choose another color. It says the traffic authorities are concerned that heavy vehicles or trucks are often overloaded. Okay, fair enough. In order to deal with this problem, the number of way bridges have been set up along a major route. So, okay, so what's a way bridge? A way bridge is basically, it sounds strange, but it's basically um, a bridge, okay? But it's a raised platform that the trucks drive onto and it weighs the truck. It finds the mass of the truck. So the reason I call it a way bridge is because it you have to go up onto this bridge type structure, it looks like a bridge, except that there's no water flowing underneath it or anything. It is just a way to measure the mass of a truck or a, or a big um, car. Okay, so the traffic authorities are concerned that the heavy trucks are often overloaded. So to prevent this problem, what they do is they set up a whole bunch of way bridges. The gross or total vehicle mass is measured at these way bridges. So it doesn't just measure the mass of the car, it will ma measure the mass of the track, of everything including in the track, including yourself, your cool drink, and all your luggage and everything that you've got behind in the back of the track, okay? The histogram below shows the data collected at a way bridge over a month, okay? Now what you need to do is look at Always, always, always look at your axes. See what is on the x-axis and on the y-axis. And on this x-axis, you can see the mass of vehicles in kilograms. Okay, so that's a whole bunch of different masses for the kilograms in vehicles. And on the right, on, on, the, on the vertical axis, we've got frequency. And the frequency, remember, is how often it happens. So what is they've measured the weight of all the different cars as they came through and then they've grouped them according to the different weights like how often they weighed a certain amount okay so it now says write down the modal class of the data but now listen what they've done is they have grouped the data do you see that they're saying that all the cars between 2500 and 4500 are in this group here yeah, the first group Okay, all the cars that have a mass between 4,500 and 6,500 are in this group. Okay, all the trucks that have a mass between 12,500 and 14,500 are in this group, which is why we don't have a mode. Okay, a mode is for single data points. Okay, a modal class, a modal class is for when you have groups of data. So, modal means a thing that happens this the most often, okay, most often. So it says write down the modal class of this data and you can see that the thing that happens the most often is 2,500 to 4,500. That has a frequency of 103 compared to 99, 85, 70, 70, and 19. So the modal class is the group that happens the most often. So that would be 2,500 to 4,500. Now it says estimate the mean gross mass for the month. Estimate the mean gross mass. Okay, so the way this works is this. We're going to take the average of each of these modal classes. Okay, we're going to take the middle point of each of these modal classes, and then we're going to multiply by the number of cars that had that mass. Okay, so what they're saying is, yeah, that we've got 2,000, we've got 103 cars or trucks or vehicles, whatever, that had a mass of between 2,500 and 4,500. 
we only had 19 vehicles that had a mass of between 4,500 and 6,500. You understand? We had 70 vehicles that had a mass of between 6,500 and 8,500. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the middle value of that. Halfway between 2,000, 5,000 and 4,500 4, is 3,500, right? Halfway between 4,500 and 6,500 is 5,500. 500. Halfway between 6,5 and 8,5 is 7,5. Halfway between 8,5 and 10,5 is 9,5. Halfway between 10, 5, and 11, 12, 5 is 11, 5. And halfway between 12, 5 and 14, 5 is 13, 5. So what are we saying? We're saying, okay, fine. The total mass, the total mass is going to be 103 multiplied by 3,500 plus 19 multiplied by 5,500 plus 70 times 7,500 plus 77 times 9,500 plus 85 times 11,500 plus 99 times 17,500. And obviously this is an approximation because we're assuming that they will have the average mass, okay, between the two of them. So let's work that out on our calculators, okay? So let's get that out. We haven't finished, this is just getting the total. So we've got 103 times 3500 plus bracket 19 times 5500 bracket plus open bracket 70 times 7500 close bracket plus bracket 77 times 9500 let's get that right 9500 bracket plus bracket 85 times 11,500 bracket plus bracket 99 times 17,500 and this is going to be a huge number. That's not right. Let's just go back, delete. There's a zero missing. There we go. Okay. So it's four, okay, what is that? Four million, four hundred thirty-one thousand and five hundred. Four million, four hundred and thirty-one thousand five hundred. Okay, that's the total mass of all the cars added up. But we want the average, the mean gross square. So what we need to do is divide by the total number of cars which is going to be 103 plus 19 plus 70 plus 77 plus 85 plus 99 because that's how many cars there were in each category altogether, right? So therefore, this is going to be the, therefore the mean gross vehicle mass is going to be 4431500 divided by 103 plus 19 plus 70 plus 77 plus 85 plus 99. Right, so let's get out our calculators and go divide by bracket. 103 plus 19, 19. That's not going to work. 19 plus 70 plus 77 plus 85 plus 99 close bracket equals. So therefore, the mean mass, the average mass is 9782.56. So it equals 9872,56 kilograms. What well, that's what they're saying. The mean gross vehicle mass, mean mass of the vehicles, the average mass of the vehicles is 9872,56. Okay, now it says 
which of the measures of central tendency, the modal class or the estimated mean, will be most appropriate to describe the data set? Explain your answer. Okay, so the estimated mean was 9,872,56, right? Whereas the modal class was 103, which is 2,500 to 4,500. And it says, which of these measures of ten central tendency will be most appropriate to describe the data. Okay, so I do see that we've got a huge number of vehicles, a huge number of vehicles that are between 2,500 and 4,500 kilograms. Okay, by itself. But, but do you see that if you look at the trend, there are lots more vehicles that have masses of 6,500 and above. There is 70 for the first column, 77, 85, and 99. So in fact, that first column where it's 103 kilograms, I mean, 103 um, vehicles having a mass of 2,500 to 4,500, you can kind of think of that as kind of an outlier, okay? Yes, it exists. Yes, it's within the data, but it really doesn't fit the trend. So therefore, I would say that the estimated mean is the most appropriate to describe this set of data. Okay, you see, this is what I was talking about with the box and whisk diagram. This is what I want you to do. Okay, you don't have to draw a ruler, but I do want you to take a ruler and draw a line and then mark off like I marked off on the rulers here, but obviously not all these teeny weeny little lines. I'm talking about the fact that it's there, 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 and there, you see, that's what you would do. You'd mark it off according to those points there, and then you'd come and put your dots and crosses and your lines in, okay? So it says, for the data, determine the range, the intercordial range, the median percent of the data that lies between 11 and 13. Okay, so do you agree this is one? This here is six, that is 11, this is 13, and this is 16. This is the minimum value, that's the maximum value. This is low, this is Q1, this is Q2, and this is Q3. Now it says determine the range. Now the range is just the maximum minus the minimum, which is going to be in this case 15. 16 minus 1 is 15. Actually, that's a 2, that'll be a problem. So it's going to be 14. 14. The interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1, which in this case is going to be 13 minus 6. 13 minus 6 is going to be 7. The median is the same as Q2, okay, which is going to be 11. Now it says, determine the percentage of data that lies between 11 and 13. Determine the percentage of data that lies between 11 and 13. Hmm. Okay, well, that's pretty easy. That's going to be 25%. Okay, because of the fact that this is how the interquartile ranges work. Q1 is at 25%. Q2 is at 50%. Q3 is at 75%, and obviously the maximum is the total. So therefore, the difference between 11 and 13 is going to be the upper quartile, which is going to be 25%. Hmm, nice question. Right, let's look at another question, okay? It says, for the following data, you've got data is 20, the frequency is 30, Next piece of data is 21 with a frequency of 44. Next one, etc. etc. Okay, now it says determine the modal value. Determine the modal value. Okay, so the modal value is the one that occurs most often, and in this case, it would definitely have to be the one that occurs most often is the 60, so the value is 23. Now it says determine the position of the median. Okay, so let's count how many data points we've got. I just want to change color. Do you agree we've got, oh, okay. We've got 30 year, 44 year, 50 year, 60 year, 21 year, and 60 year. 
Okay. So how many data points do we have in total? We've got 30 plus 44. Let's try again. We've got 30 plus 44 plus 50 plus 60 plus 21 plus 6. Okay, so 6 and 1, 6 and 4 is 0. That's a 1 carry a 1. Okay, so that there is 10, 15, 21, 211. 211. Okay, so there are 211 data points. In order to find the position of the median, we're going to divide this by 2, and that's going to give me 105,5, right, or 106. So now what we need to find is where is the 105th or 106th value is going to be. So do you agree that's the T? If we add 44, that becomes 74, no go, right? Now, if we add 50, we get um, 7 and 4 is 11, and 7 and 5 is 12. So do you agree that somewhere between year and year, year we had 74, but now suddenly, year we've got 121. So somewhere in this group here, we are getting the position of the median. So the position of the meeting medium is in that group over there and then finally they want the median they actually want the median well it is going to have to be 22 because we're saying that the median fits in here some way so therefore it has to be 22 right nice question let's do this one it says um, it says 19 girls are required to, I'm sorry, 19 girls are required to complete a puzzle as quickly as possible. Their times in seconds are recorded and shown in the table below. Okay, so let's just check this. It's 14, 15, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18. Oh, look, they put in numerical order. How nice are they? It says identify the median taken by the girls to complete the puzzles. Then 19 girls again. So what do we need to do? We need to find halfway. So half of 19 is what? Nine and a half. Okay, because two nines are 18. Um, so 19 is going to be nine and a half. So in other words, we want nine numbers on either side. So then we one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right. So the median time taken for the girls to complete the puzzle is 19 seconds. And don't forget to fill in your unit, especially since they gave it to you yeah, in seconds. It says determine the lower quartile and upper quartiles for this data. Okay, so that's pretty easy because now we know where this one is. We now know what the, the possibilities are for the first quartile, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So therefore, it's going to be 5. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Where did I get the 5 from? Because we want it halfway. We want there to be, so we've got nine numbers here, right? We've got nine numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I want to count up from the left and count up from the right so that they cross at the same point. So if you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, we can see that 17 is going to be Q1. Okay, similarly, to get the upper quartile, we're going to do the same thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so the lower quartile, Q1, is 17, and Q3 is 22. That's a 22, just a second, 22. 22, right. Now it says draw a box, box and whisker diagram to represent the data. So again, guys, you should be using a ruler to draw a number line. The numbers go from 14 to 29. So you could really go from, I don't know, 15 to 30. So we could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six. I'm running out of space. Okay, let's go somewhere else. Let's just erase this. 
and let's do it down here draw it down here um okay so sorry it's askew um and we definitely have the smallest number which is 14 so therefore this would be 13. so we're going from 10 we're obviously not going down from one so we're going 10 um we could go to no 10 15 20, 25, 30. Obviously, it'd be better if we could write down all the little points along that line, and you should actually practice doing that. But I can't, so it's not going to be useful for me to draw it. Okay, now it says draw the box and whisk around. Do you agree that the minimum value is 14? Okay, so the minimum value is over here. It's sitting at 14. Okay, minimum. Right, now what we need is Q1, which is 17. No, wait, yeah, 17. So Q1's about 15, 17. Okay, Q1's about over there. Q1 is at 17. Q2 is at 19. And Q3 is at 22, 22. So let's just join this dot and part of this, the skewness of this drawing. And then we finally want the upper quartile, which is 22, which is, that was what? This is 22. Oh, we want the, sorry, we want the last number, which is 29. That's cities, that's we're not sure. So it's quite a big outlier on the light rust on the maximum side. Um, not so much on the minimum side. Okay, so there we go. We've drawn our dot box and whisker diagram. And please, guys, I'm asking nicely, very nicely, to make sure it looks pretty. Okay. Now it says the five number summary. Oh, in time and seconds, take about 19 boys to complete the same is 15. So the boys, I'm going to do it over here. 15. They are 19, 23, 26, and 30. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. So the number of girls, 19 girls took the puzzle, and then 19 boys took the puzzle. Okay, and this is the amount of time it took. Okay, so on average, do you see that it actually took the boys more time than it took the girls to complete this thing? It says calculate the interquartile range for the time taken by the boys. So that's going to be Q3 minus Q1. Q3 is 25 minus, sorry, that's not 25, it's 26. That's 26. So it's going to be 26. Oh, 26, 26, 26. So it's going to be 26 minus the interquartile range over here is going to be 19. Okay, 19. Oh, I see why that was 25. Sorry. So that there is 26 minus 19, which is 7. So the interquartile range here is 7. Now it says if one of only one boy takes 19 seconds to complete the puzzle, what percentage of the boys took at least 19 seconds to complete the puzzle? Okay, it says if only one boy, one boy took 19 seconds. Okay, so let's just go through this again, just to make sure you understand what's going on. This is what our block looks like. Okay, we have got, this is at 15, 19, 23, 26, and 30. All right. Now it says, if one boy, only one, took 19 seconds to complete the puzzle, what percentage of the boys took at least 19 seconds? So in other words, we want to take at least. So we want everything from 19 up. Do you agree? Everybody from 19 up. 
And how many is that? Well, you've got to remember we're dividing this into quarters. So this is 25, this is 50, and this is 75. So do you agree that 75% of the boys took at least 19 seconds to copy the puzzle, okay, at least. So what did we say it was? We said 75% of the boys. Okay, so that's that one. Now it says, in which group the girls or boys did a larger number of learners complete the puzzle in less than 23 seconds? Justify your answer. Okay, so let us do a couple of things first. Let's get rid of the red. Okay, and then let's just write these numbers down over here. These are going to be 15, then it is, what is that, 19, 23, 26, and 30, okay. So now what does it say? In which group the girls and boys did a, lot, did a larger number of learners complete the puzzle in less than 23 seconds, okay, less than 23 seconds seconds. Okay, so do you agree that at this point here, 75% of the guys, actually it's not 75, what is it? I mentioned the group a large number of them complete and that's 23%. Okay, do you agree that yeah, we've got 50% of the group that completed the puzzle in less than 23 seconds, so that's 50%, okay? Q1 and Q2. But with the girls, 23% is about over here, hey? What's that, 22? So with the girls, 75% of the class managed to complete the question. So therefore, in this case, the girls seem to have done much better than the boys. Right, grade 10s, that's it for today. We'll carry on with statistics and probability in our next maths lesson, which is on Monday. Have a great day.